Hi, it's Rich with Rich Mount Photography, Sacramento, California, and I'm at a beautiful park in Fair Oaks, California, where I live, just doing a nice tutorial outdoors on a summer's day. First of all, I want to apologize. I haven't done a video in a little while. So you know what? I'm very busy. We've got our podcast. I've done workshops. We have uh, so many things going on. So I hope you will understand, and I know you do, but I'm going to start trying to pump out a few videos in the middle of the summer to keep us through the fall. So with that said, I'd like to make sure you subscribe to this channel, the Rich Baum YouTube tips and tricks for photography website. So subscribe and use that Adorama link below. You'll see it there. If you're going to buy some new equipment, it would sure be great to me if you would use my Adorama link. It helps me produce these free informative videos. So the next thing is we also have all kinds of things going on like webinars and you'll see that on our website too, uh, shootingspaces.net website. So check out Shooting Spaces, check out my podcast and let's get into an important subject I felt was really great to start this section of videos off and that is what lens to use for real estate photography. Now, please understand, I'm using air quotes because real estate photography is different than architectural photography or design photography or wedding or sports, but we know that. So real estate photography has some parameters which actually make it a little better and less expensive for you, the consumer, to uh, purchase a nice lens. You don't need the fastest lens. You don't need a 7200 2.8. You don't need a tilt shift. If you don't need to get it or don't want to get it, you can start with an F4 lens or because we're shooting at F7.1 to F8 or F11. So, you know, you can get almost any lens. The main thing is you got to get it pretty wide. Now, a lot of people think wide is 35 millimeters, which would be considered a wide angle lens. But for us in real estate photography, I think we're talking about 24 to 12 millimeters or 10 millimeters. So you got to have 10 on the wide, 24 on the narrow, and something in that range is going to set you up to, to succeed. You don't want to go too wide because you might induce some distortion. You don't want to do too long because you won't get the whole picture. You won't get everything in like we're shooting a bathroom or a powder room. Got to be careful because you may not get everything in the shot, but you'll figure that out. So I'm just going to start off with the first lens I am going to bring out is on my camera. Now this is a Sony a7 III. It's a full frame mirrorless camera, but it doesn't really matter. You don't need full frame. You don't need mirrorless. Uh, you can do crop sensor. And what I'm filming this on is my Sony a6400, which is a crop sensor camera. And I also have a video for the a6000 and the Sam Yang 12 millimeter lens, which is so cheap and so great. And it's tell you something, I shoot 90, no, I shoot 75% of my real estate, real estate photography on this a6400. So it's, it's like $800 and it's a great lens. And also I'm filming you with my 18 to, to 18, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, 18 to uh, 135 millimeter crop sensor lens that came as a kit lens with the Sony a6400. I wouldn't use this to shoot anything but video, but, or like walk around shots, but it works for me and it's inexpensive. So let's just get into this. The full frame, now if I was using a crop sensor camera, I really recommend this Sam Yang 12 millimeter. It's the Rokinon is the exact same lens, so you can either get the Sam Yang or the 12. Now this is 12 millimeters on a crop sensor, so if you put this on a crop sensor, it's gonna be the same as 18 millimeters on a full frame. So you gotta deal with the crop sensor. And for Sony and Nikon, I think it's 1.5 crop sensor. So basically the way to figure it out is if you have a 100 millimeter lens, you take half of that, 50 millimeters, and you add it on to the, the 100 millimeters, and it's the equivalent of 150 millimeters. So if you've got 12 millimeters, then it's the equivalent to 18 millimeters on a full frame uh, body but we're using it on a crop sensor. So that's what I would suggest, and I have a video to show you that, but I wanna go into some of the other lenses, some newer lenses that I've gotten since my move to Sony about a year and a half, almost two years ago. From Nikon, after 40 years, I've gone all to Sony, and I love it. I'm, I'm not sponsored by and not affiliated with Sony, 
Just so you know, I'm not pushing Sony because of any other reason than it's the right choice for me. Okay, so let's just start with my day-to-day. -day. Uh, this is a full-frame camera, the a7 III, and uh, this is going to be the Sony uh, 16 to 35 G Master, and you can see that because it has a little red G there, and it's the G Master, so it's the top of the line. And personally, I found the G Master lenses are better, are sharper, are faster focusing, but not necessarily. You don't need it for real estate photography. So, uh, as I say, that the 16 to 35 is a wonderful lens and it is super sharp. It goes to 16 millimeters, which is more than wide enough. It goes to 13 millimeters, I mean, sorry, 35 millimeters, which is more than enough if you wanted to take this on a trip around the world as your only wide lens. You could get portraits at 35 millimeters and you could get, uh, get great wide angle landscapes and great wide angle um, real estate or architectural or any design photography you want with 16 millimeters. There's very little distortion. It's a great lens. It ain't cheap though. It's about $2,100. So that is something to take into consideration. And that's why I'm going to bring up, you can get, and I don't have it in front of me, but you may want to look at the Sony Zeiss the 16 to 35 f4 it's a very good lens very sharp and you probably in most situations wouldn't notice the difference between the two now if i'm shooting a wedding in challenging lighting conditions that i really want this lens because it focuses better and it focuses down to 2.8 which sh focusing at 2.8 open aperture gives you a little better focusing than f4 but anyway, you could check out that Nikon Zeiss and I'll have that information in the show notes, okay? So I saying, if you're gonna go with a zoom, my choice of the best zoom lens for your choice and you can go with the Canon or the, so or the Nikon. Now I have only been a Nikon shooter and I know that Sony uh, makes this, but I know that Nikon makes the 16 to 35 F4. It's a great lens and I've been using that one for years and Canon makes a 16 to 35 also. So you could get that and an F4 and I think you're talking about eight, nine, a thousand dollars, eight, nine hundred or a thousand dollars. So it's not too expensive. But if you really want to go for a lens that's going to last you a long time and be the best you can get, it's the, the, the 16 to 35 G Master. Okay, so now let's go into my next one. And I'm going to go on the other end of the spectrum. This is the ultra wide, the Sony 12 to 24, and this is an F4 lens. I got this on a sort of a whim and people were telling me it's a great lens to have and I thought, you know what, I would love to go a little wider than 16 millimeters, but it's only four millimeters wider, but it is much wider, I will say. It has a huge front end on this and that is a hassle because you can't put on with this big bulbous um, uh, element on the front, you cannot use filter screw and filters so you got to get an adapter if you want filters but if you don't care about that and you just want the widest 12 millimeter full frame are you kidding me that is something i never thought i would have but i got this lens and i love it i think it's great started using it for real estate photography and i've been going more towards the 16 to 35 because it's just anything from 12 to 14 or even 16 is just it's too wide. It is, people were saying it didn't have distortion. I disagree 1000%. There is distortion. If you've got something in the foreground, it's going to look stretched. It is the traits of the physical properties of just shooting something that wide. But you may need a 12 millimeter for certain things. It's a very good lens. It's well made. You're going to be able to find really great reviews on each of these lenses. So I'm not going to go into it, but it's well made. It's extremely light and compact. I don't mind that it can't take a filter because you can buy these really big filter systems. I'm not going to get into that, but I think if you want a really great versatile lens, the 12 to 24 Sony, and this is just the G lens, not the G Master. And the G Master lenses have a red G on them and my G just has a silver G on it. So long story short, 12 to 24 is something you can get, and this runs for about $1,600. I found my version at Adorama. I found it used, so you should always check out B&H Adorama, and B&H and Adorama, look for used demo lenses, and I saved 
three or four hundred dollars on this lens. I like it very much and I will be traveling with this lens and my 16 to 35 because this lens 12 millimeters in landscape it will be outrageous and it will be fantastic and as wide as ever you'd want to be but I'm just going to leave it at it's a little wide for real estate and really wide for design photography. But if you have a little powder room and you really got to get something in the tight space, I would say that this is a great choice of a lens. So I'm going to put on the uh, proprietary lens cap and you always want to put a lens cap on this lens. OK, so next I'm going to go to another lens, which is actually more specialty lens and for real estate. This is a lens that every photographer wants to have for portraits, for weddings, you name it. And this is the Sony or any. You can get Canon or Nikon, but the focal range of 24 to 70 f 2.8 is something you want to have. Now, it's, I don't use this for real estate photography, but I do use it for exterior shots where you want to go further back and zoom in. 24 millimeters is a great focal length. It's a little narrow for interiors, but it is perfect for uh, design photography or, I'm sorry, interiors that are real estate. It's great for interiors that are design photography or doing uh, architectural or whatever. This is 2.8 aperture and it is fast, sharp, and it is fast focusing. It is just the best. And every photographer that's serious about what they do, especially if you're shooting weddings and portraits and people in events for low light, for all these things, you don't really need for real estate, but you need it for wedding portraits, you name it. You need the 2.8 aperture. So I'm going to put this over here in the category of you don't need it for real estate, but it's something to consider. So I'm going to put that over there. Next, I'm going to come up with my tilt shift lenses. Now, there's a lot of questions, a lot of debates and a lot of things in the forums and in general. Do you need a tilt shift lens? No. Is this is this tutorial going to teach you what a tilt shift does? Maybe not, probably not. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you show you your opportunities and I'm going to say that if you're serious about real estate and then going on to design or architectural work, I really recommend checking out a tilt shift lens and I will do a video coming up shortly that will be specifically on tilt shifts. Here is the Canon 17 millimeter and Canon 24 millimeter tilt shifts. Um, I have both because I use the 17 millimeter for more wider shots that are more real estate or interiors that I need wide. But if I'm doing really designer shots and I'm doing architectural work, I'm going to go with the 24 millimeter. Now the 24 is f 3.5 and the um, the 17 millimeters is f 4. But it doesn't really matter because we're not really shooting sports that we need a fast aperture or really shallow depth of field, which would be f 1.2, 1.4, 1.8, f 2, f 2.8. You don't have to have that. So F4 or F3.5 is great. And I recommend really, let's just start with my favorite. This is new to me. And I want to explain something that I'm using Sony, but I've got an adapter on this and it's the Sigma MC11 adapter. It was only $150 and it's great. Well, now please understand with this adapter, I don't need to have autofocus because this is manual. All tilt shift lenses are manual focusing lenses. So I'm saying you can get this adapter and it works great. It's just a conduit between, but I get all the information transferred to my Sony body. And this is the best lens I found for what we want. If you're going to go with a tilt shift, 17 millimeters is super nice and wide, not too wide, not too much distortion. It's just a great lens. It runs about $2,200 and it's well worth it. As you can see here or not, it's got a super big element on the front. So you have to keep the lens cap handy. And as with the, uh, excuse me, let me put this down. As with the, um, as all my lenses roll away, as with the 12 to 24, it doesn't take a filter, a screw on filter. So you can get an adapter for this and I actually have one, but I'm not going to go into that today. But I'm telling you that 17 millimeter tilt shift by Canon will fit on a Nikon camera. 
I mean, I'm sorry, will fit on a Sony camera. It will not fit on a Nikon camera. And I'll just say about that in a second. So this is a great adapter and a great combination for the Sony a7 III. I love it. And if you're doing Canon, no brainer. If you're gonna get a tilt shift, get the 17 millimeter. 24 millimeters, also great. It's a little less expensive. I think this is about 1900, but it's not wide enough, in my opinion, for everyday real estate photography. Now you can shoot some rooms with 24, but you're gonna need a little wider on smaller bedrooms and things like that. So it's really up to you. Um, the great thing too is if you're shooting on a Sony A7R 3 You've got so many megapixels, you can use the 17 in crop mode and use it at 24 millimeters. So that's a dual purpose lens. And I will be getting a 7R3 in the future, just not right now. I think I've spent enough this year or last year anyway. So the 17 millimeter Canon tilt shift is great. It will work. I think you can get an adapter on Fuji. Don't quote me. I know you cannot use a Canon lens onto a Nikon, which leads me to telling you, if you're a Nikon shooter, which I was, before I went to Sony, I had the Nikon 19 millimeter tilt shift. It was a great, wonderful tilt shift. 19 is still pretty wide. It's, it's almost indistinguishable between 17, but I did find that the $3,400 price tag was a little over the over the limit. It just didn't make sense to me. And so when I left Nikon, I just sold my uh, 19 millimeter tilt shift and went to the 17 millimeter. And I got the adapter and I sold it used for $1,900. And I still saved three four hundred dollars by trade changing into Nikon and going to Sony. So that's a really great advantage. Okay, so we've got our 17 millimeter tripod, our 17 millimeter tilt shift if you want to really do wide real estate photography and 17 millimeters is not going to exhibit this extremely crazy distortion like the 12 uh, 12 to 14 millimeters it's it's just not just it's not terrible distortion but it's just everything is stretched and i really have found that in the majority of the cases it just doesn't work for me so i'm not using the, the 12 to 24 as much as I was. So let's go into the 24. Now, if you're a Nikon shooter, you can get a used uh, 24 millimeter tilt shift at a reasonably price, maybe $1,400, $1,500. It's a great lens and you could do 80% of your real estate photography. But I got the Canon since I went to Sony and I had the adapter and I love this lens. It is so sweet. It is the per perfect focal length 24. If I'm doing design photography, kitchens, living rooms, things like that, I tell you, I, I much prefer it over 17, but that's just me. And you can crop this if you're A7R with the, with the uh, so many megapixels in crop mode. But for me, I really like the 24 and I've always liked the 24. So you can find the Nikon version. You've got the Canon and this is, I think this is 19, I'm sorry. Yeah, $1,900 and you can find these used for about $1,500. They make a version one and a version two, but I wouldn't worry about it. I think either are probably really good. So as soon as this video comes out, I'm sure they'll come out with a version three. But for now, I really, really like, um, really like this lens. This is also an L lens. You can see a, a red line around it. So there's the top of the line glass like the Sony G Master lenses. Okay, what else have I not talked about? Oh, let's talk about some specialty lenses. Let's talk about a 85 1.8. Now I will do a disclaimer. 85 millimeters is very long. Uh, you, you mean, when I mean long is it's got a lot of reach and it's really hard to get detail shots with this if it's not something that is small. So you've got to literally go way back in the room or even sometimes I've shot from outside the room through a doorway, but this 85 millimeter F 1.8 Sony lens, the best buck, best bang for your buck, it's about $450 and I love this lens. 85 is great, it's a little long, so I'll talk about what I would prefer, although I don't have it, but I'll tell you, the 85 is fantastic, it's a 
beautiful lens. It focuses really good in normal lighting and it'd be perfect for design. So for 500 bucks, you can get this lens and it's great for weddings and great for sports and great for everything. 1.8, so it's not the fastest, but it is pretty darn fast and makes a big difference. For anybody that's wondering, going from 1.8, from 2.8 to 1.8, that's a huge difference and you can't understand it until you shoot it. But shooting sports with a 2.8 uh, or a 1.8, it's a game changer. 1.8 is where I want to be on everything. And a prime is just so much fun and so easy. So I'm just going to recommend the 85 uh, 1.8 as a great detail shot. And most of my detail shots I've done in the last year and a half have been with this lens. Great lens. And for under $500, it's an awesome bargain. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I mentioned the 12 millimeter Samyang lens, a great bargain. You can get these for about $250 now. It's a manual lens. And again, it's a crop sensor lens. So 12 millimeters is equivalent to 24 on a full frame camera. But um, you, would, you can use this on your crop sensor and get 24 millimeters, and it's awesome. Just fantastic. Okay, last lens I want to talk about here is going to be this big bad boy. And you know what? I used to call it really big, but I've been shooting for years a 300 millimeter 2.8 and a 400 millimeter 2.8. So 2.8, some people think is just crazy wide, I mean, crazy big, but it's really not that bad. And I wanna say that every professional photographer should have two lenses. If you're gonna do events or you're gonna do weddings or anything like that, 70 to 200, 2.8, 24 to 70, 2.8. These are the staples of the professional photographer in the real world, and it will pay for itself dozens of times. I just want to bring this out to say though, and imagine this, if you're shooting inside a house and you've got a room, you're like you're shooting a living room, and then behind it is the kitchen and behind it is another room. You can then, once you finish shooting with your um, 16 to 35, you can just pull this bad boy out and start getting detail shots. You can use the same lighting setup, the same everything, or you can just use this ambient and you can use it at this goes from 70 to 200. You can use it at 70 and get a little wider. It's a great lens. It's not really a design lens or a real estate lens, although many times you can use this in a um, landscape scenario and get just wonderful shots. So I will say this is probably my favorite lens of every lens I own now, 70 to 200. It's just not my favorite in a real estate realm, but it's something to think about. So I'm gonna stop right now because I'm getting a little long-winded on this subject. And I'm really hoping that you guys have gained some information from this. I would love to see your comments because I always answer my comments. I try and get to them in a day or two, but sometimes a little lax because I've been busy. But you're gonna find some great information on this and I'll put in the show notes the information to each and every one of these lenses. And if you have any questions, you can always send comments on the YouTube channel and ask anything specific about this. Um, if you need more information about gear acquisition, uh, if you're gonna start really getting into this and spending money, it may be good to think about private one-on-one -on -one coaching, which I do coaching for all types of real estate photography, all types of uh, design photography, and I can coach you on sports or wedding, but I wanna just say that it may be helpful for you, especially with learning how to get the right lights, the right triggers, things like that. Coaching might be for you there. So you can also send me a question at rich at richbomb.com about um, coaching, if that is something you might be thinking of. It's a great way to learn and uh, get private one-on-one -on -one help, if you're, especially if you're in Europe or off Africa or Australia. Getting some, uh, a Skype session with me might help you a lot. So I want to say thank you very much. Really, really appreciate all of your um, feedback, your comments, your use of the Adorama link. It's wonderful and it shows me what I do does make a difference. And I don't know if I'm changing the world, 
but I'm certainly making people have better success and luck with their business and for their real estate photography. I know that because I get messages from people like you every day. So I thank you. And again, check out shootingspacespodcast.com or shootingspaces.net. And we have our webinar coming up, which is on composition. And it's on uh, with Tony Colangelo, who is a master at composition. We're doing webinars. We're doing that. I'm doing workshops. I've got another one I'm coming out with. I think I'm going to do one in November. So that's great. We've got the PFRE Photography for Real Estate Conference in Las Vegas, the first conference for real estate photographers. I urge you to check that out. And that's November 20th and 21st. And I think it's November 20th and 21st. Excuse me if it's not, but you can find that information online and it's called the PFRE Conference. And that's gonna be a fantastic event. I will be there and you can hang out with me and just join me and we can talk about shop and talk about whatever, but it's gonna be a blast. So there's so many great opportunities to learn. And one of the great opportunities, in my opinion, is the Rich Bomb Tips, Tips and Tricks channel for real estate photography a little plug there but i know you understand and i really really i believe in what i do and i want you to shoot better shoot smarter shoot better products better projects get faster make more money and then go spend it on your family and go go spend you can then take it on and use it on a plane ticket to vegas november for the conference and anyway a lot of great stuff out there please send me some comments and i just wish you all the best of luck and uh, keep on shooting, shooting spaces. Talk to you later. Bye.